Um, I'm delighted now to move on to our next speaker, Rosie Martin. Rosie, as um, many of you will know, is a renowned artist, photographer, writer, lecturer, and psychotherapist of many years' experience, together with the late, great Joe Spence. Rosie pioneered phototherapy techniques in the 1980s, and she's continued to explore issues of gender and sexual identity, aging and memory, self and performance through her practice and through her impressive range of publications, exhibitions and talks for more than 30 years. So let's welcome Rosie now, thank you. Yeah, trying to compress one's practice into 10 minutes is a challenge, which I will try and meet. Mm, the selfie is a form of digital fashioning. The ease of taking, editing, and sharing, and certainly its ubiquity on Facebook, could be said to be a way of controlling one's self-representation. It is a consciously curated repertoire of images. Oh, is this a consciously curated repertoire of images? Is the aim, conscious or unconscious, to, to create a PR document of an idealised self with images carefully selected and edited to present the story of me looking great, having fun, being the life and soul of the party, going to interesting places, or even playfully performing the self? Is this then some updated version of the rhetoric of the family album with its criteria for inclusion being the creation of the myth of happiness and success. However, this is an individualized story, a self-authoring, which could be said to meet a fundamental need to be seen, noticed, and affirmed in one's existence, even if only virtually, dependent on a Facebook like. However, making self-portraits can be very revealing and open up aspects of the self to scrutiny and exploration. Reenactment phototherapy has a paradoxical relationship to the selfie, as although it does share some similarities, the intentions and processes are very different. If we find ourselves through the complex and interweaving narratives that we tell of our lives, a frequent prompt to such recollections are the old photographs which we keep safely stored, or not in the digital age, but that's another question. It was the very paucity of what could be found within the family album and within, do and within dominant media that prompted Jo Spence and I, way back in 83, 1983, to develop phototherapy. Exploring the self as a series of fictions, a web of interrelated stories told to us and about us, we use therapeutic techniques to look behind the screen memories, the simplifications and myths of others, too long accepted as our own histories. Within the therapeutic relationship, we explored ways of making visible the complexity and contradictions of our own stories from our points of view by reenacting memories, most often of the vulnerabilities and repressed traumas that may otherwise continue to haunt. The shame of feeling silenced, unheard, and unseen could then be challenged. The secrets thus shared and made visible could become less restrictive. In finding transformative or nurturing images, a reframing could be enabled. And that's where the therapeutic aspect comes in, those last processes. We were always concerned to place the individual's issues within a societal frame to address the politics of specific identity formations and the personal as political. We aim to make visible the effects of institutional gazes and societal frames through their impact upon the individual. Contesting the idea of any possible idealised image of the self, since that is an impossibility anyway, rather embracing and, and attempting to make visible the multiplicity of identities that any individual inhabits throughout their lives. This practice is about exploring aspects of one's own history within the containment of th and support of the therapeutic gaze, which offers a kind of mirroring that acts as a witness to the story which unfolds, gives permission, and is not judgmental. Mm. 
It is a collaborative process. It is a performative practice, not about capturing an image, but seeking to make it happen, to take place. It's playful. And since there's an in a therapeutic intent, confidentiality is important. The only work that's made public is work that has a resonance beyond the personal, that has social and cultural meanings that can communicate with an audience, and where permission is given. Consequently, <coughs> I'll use my own self-images in this talk. And I'm going to have to keep an eye on the time. <coughs> my mother. My first love. I decided to use this photograph as my starting point to give my mother more autonomy because it represented her before I was born, a woman I never knew. I'd always liked this image. There she stands, so elegant, in, in the tailored jacket that was made by my father. Yet, I knew hers was a story of a working-class woman with aspirations that were frustrated by circumstances beyond her control. As I tamed my unruly hair and applied her tight, contained lipstick outline to my mouth to draw what I had perceived as her self-sacrificing martyr's smile, I recalled her words. I gave up my life for you. Never get married. You will not get what you want. Within the, phototherapy, within the, the phototherapeutic process, I experienced the impact of these words, feelings of tension and refined constriction, the sense of being weighed down by responsibilities and prescribed by societal roles too hard to ma maintain. I touched upon the frustrations of unfulfilled ambition. I also the, explored the aspect of her that delighted in looking elegant. So in this series, I examined the complexity of the mother-daughter relationship, as the mother implicitly teaches her daughter the contradictions of both to be like her, to respect her, but not to choose the same life as her. Acts of reparation. After my mother died, after the dementia years, I wanted to reclaim my image of her through a gentler and more forgiving reenactment <coughs> in what had been her home, um, wearing her clothes. And again, the same referent image as the starting point. But in this, I was aiming to learn to nurture and mother myself. So the energy was very different from the previous works. Um, I chose to put this one up, although it's very old work, because it's about teenage girls. And as... Um, and as we've already discussed, the selfie is quite often about that teenage experience. And this was me looking at my memories of the problematics of the crisis of identity of my adolescent years, which for me, being 15, would have been circa 1962. So, <laughs> that's the presentation to the world. However, as a working class girl in a middle class school, humiliated because of her Cockney accent until she could only stutter those despised sounds, silenced through her difference, who either tried so very hard to achieve or actively rebelled. I had elocution lessons, if you're wondering. <laughs> who learnt through research and application Oh, sorry, this is about me actively rebelling. Yes, this is learning how to smoke behind the, um, behind the bicycle sheds, a habit I've only given up a few years ago. Very difficult process, and I still long for, I must say. So it was about being different. It was about not fitting in. This is another crew that you're trying to please, because the whole problem about the adolescent is, is the endless set of audiences that one's performing oneself for. And in this case, my failure to, be, to please any of them. Um, however, yes, learn through research and application to present herself as a fashionable heterosexual young woman. Um, style Dusty Springfield, as you can see. Um, creative work is pleasure. Latest 45s playing on the dance set alone with my fantasies. I meticulously constructed myself as heroin style circa 1962. The best bit about going out was always getting ready. 
So I created the image. Now, this might make it nowadays to a Facebook page. <laughs> if this was me doing it then, this was the image, this was the presentation. However, I chose to put on my glasses. I destroyed the image. Rather than being looked at, I preferred to see. So, and then there's the, the, then there's the construction of the body pre um, Wonder Bra. I had to stuff my bra and paint on cleavage, and certain arm position gives you the desired breasts. <laughs> Learning how to stand as if I didn't have rugby footballer's legs, but took up really no weight at all. This was 1962. Um, and then the garments, squeezing myself into, squeezing myself too into a too tightly fitting shoe, creating this image, only to find when I looked in the family album, to my shock and horror, that I'd ended up in all my attempts at transgression, <laughs> looking more like my mum. <laughs> So it's funny, but actually when I got this work back, I felt so much pain and sorrow for this child, this, this youngster who was failing each audience. And the process was about feeling compassion Re and reconnecting with the self who spent pleasurable hours in cr creating the masquerade. <laughs> I need to replace my glasses and destroy the image. Provides a clue to my preference to observe rather than be the object of the look. And seeing the middle-aged woman contriving to replicate the teenager adds a poignancy as if layers have been peeled off to expose the social and psychic forces that went to make up the woman reinscribed on the body. One minute, okay. Quick flip through outrageous ages, though. Um, <laughs> maybe I don't even need to tell you what this is about. This is about contesting, this, contesting and acting into the stereotypes of the older woman, um, the desire and discontent that most women will anyway feel when they enter the changing room, um, what it means to occupy an older body by, in this instance, it was looking at ugly parts of the self, which became strangely aestheticized through this process of the gaze, through this process of looking with a kindly and accepting gaze. <coughs> and then, uh, key texts that describe ageing in um, very limiting and, one could almost argue, distressing ways. We then projected on our bodies to contest the reading in which, I would argue, the flesh overpowers the words and the body answers back and reclaims the defining, limiting... Um, uh, this is Freud, Freud on the older woman. He talks about sadistic and um, anal. And so, anyway, it's not a good one, I can assure you. Um, <laughs> here, it's a rigorous notion about playing with memesis that we used. And finally, um, a quote from a feminist author who reclaims the notion of the older, wo the older woman's wisdom being that the scales have fallen. So in these, using texts on the body to contest ideas of what constitutes the aging body. Thank you. That was fabulous. And of course, so cruel, so cruel to just allow 10 minutes for 30, more than 30 years of fantastic, groundbreaking work. But um, we'll come back to Rosie, of course, in the discussion time. Um, and I think we'll also come back to that idea of self as fiction as well. I think that's a really important point in discussion, discussing the selfie.